Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Now one of my favorite Disney animated films of all time is actually Tarzan. I love the soundtrack, I love the action, I love the way Tarzan was animated moving through the jungle, uh, and I thought that their Jane was really uh, very well realized. And the whole film I just thought really was the best uh, version of Tarzan I'd seen yet. So I was a little bit nervous but excited when it was announced last week that uh, Hollywood is moving forward with uh, a new live action adaptation of Tarzan. Uh, and it's going to star Alexander Skarsgård from True Blood, who is my favorite character on the show and a lot of people's favorite character on that show. Uh, and the reason it made headlines last week is because Christoph Waltz looks to be signing on to play the Clayton-type villain. Uh, and also for Jane, the names in the mix to play her are Margot Roby, who, who was on Pan Am and is also in the new Wolf of Wall Street movie. And I think she might be an interesting choice, but Emma Stone's name is also in there. And uh, while I feel Emma Stone would be a great choice, I might be swayed a little bit because I think she'd be similar to the version that Minnie Driver voiced in the uh, animated uh, version. But I also have some concern that she's already playing Gwen Stacy, so I don't really know if she should play two of the same kind of character. Uh, and, and Emma Stone actually seems to have moved away from her more comedic side as an actress, which I think is a shame because I think that's what made her famous and what I think audiences really liked about her. She, um, you know, when she went blonde, for some reason, I think she lost a lot of her, her edge. And I, told, I hope she gets that back. Bonds can be edgy. So I thought that, uh, I think that this is coming together nicely. I think Skarsgård does a very good job playing different types of um, characters on True Blood. There was a storyline where he had amnesia and he became like a different kind of guy because he didn't remember his past. And he did that very well, I thought. So I think if I could believe anybody commuting with apes, I think Skarsgård could maybe actually pull it off. And he, I think he'd have no problem with the loincloth as uh, any True Blood viewers would know. Uh, the film will be directed by David Yates, who did most of the late Harry Potter films. Uh, and so I think, I think this film is coming together very nicely. I think that as long as it has a really good script, I mean, as I always say, that's the most important part. you got to get it right, Hollywood. Uh, I would certainly be interested in seeing this. Uh, and I think with today's special effects, they could maybe they have a shot at really doing a great Tarzan that could really move through the jungle quite well uh, as well. Because I thought Man of Steel, uh, despite some of my problems with that film, I did really think that, you know, Superman was very well realized in the way he moved through the film. You know, I think special effects have finally reached that point where that's doable. So that's the first news story for the day. The second is that, uh, interestingly, women, there are very few female directors. Obviously, there's Catherine Bigelow. She won the first uh, Oscar. She was the first woman to win the Best uh, Director Oscar. Uh, so that was very encouraging. But there aren't a lot of women filmmakers for some reason. But we're starting to get some more from a very interesting place in front of the camera. Uh, of course, as we know, Angelina Jolie is taking her directing career very seriously. She is actually directing another film which she is again not starring in. She seems to, she's in Maleficent, but she seems to have sidelined her acting career to really focus on directing. Uh, the film is going to be called uh, Unbroken. It's another war movie like In the Land of Blood and Honey, which was her directorial debut. Uh, this one takes place during World War II though, about an Olympic runner who is captured by Japanese forces. Uh, and it's also, also interestingly written by the Coen brothers, which I think is uh, uh, very tantalizing. So that's good. But also, it was also announced recently that Kate Blanchett is going to direct her first film. She's apparently been doing a lot of directing in the theater, uh, the theater scene in the UK, uh, and now she's going to step behind the camera. So I just think as long as some female directors are coming from anywhere, I think that's great. I think we need more in the uh, in the genre. I mean, in, in the medium. Uh, but when I say genre because I would really like to see women uh, not just make like these dramas, though. I would love to see a successful female action director. For some for some time, Mimi Leader was doing pretty well, uh, but then there was this horrible quote where everyone was like, "She's like the mom on set," and I was like. That's so annoying. No one says like a director is the dad on the set. Why would the mom, a female director be the mom? And I was like, maybe later, I think that you were contributing to this problem maybe. Uh, but I, I would just really like to see, uh, well, Catherine Bigelow obviously is a, a, an action director, but I would just love to see maybe women be able to move into this uh, a little more strongly. And, and obviously the best test of a female director is if you can watch the movie and not realize that it's a female director, you can't tell the gender of the director. But Kimberly Pierce is doing, uh, from Boys Don't Cry, is doing Carrie, which comes out, so I'm excited about that. Uh, but I think this new trend of actresses becoming directors is interesting and, ex and exciting. So that's the second story of the day. Uh, the third is that, it, you know, there's been a problem in Hollywood that a lot of movies aren't being shot there anymore. And in fact, the mayor has kind of declared it an emergency and they're trying to fix it. Uh, but I was reading some articles about it and uh, a few days ago they had one where they said that China is trying to build their own Hollywood movie studio. Kind of look what they have going on in the UK 
where there's a huge tax break. I think I read it, uh, it was like 25% or something. It's just really encouraging. Uh, and also the, the UK says they have very high quality sound stages. So that's another reason to go there. Uh, but you know, the UK gets a ton of films. There, and there was even a story the other day, uh, actually yesterday I think, that they're actually overbooked. There are so many big special effects blockbusters coming out that want to shoot in the UK. Uh, right now there's Cinderella 2015 is shooting, Avengers is going there, Guardians of the Galaxy is currently shooting, Star Wars will be shooting there, uh, James Bond, uh, you know, Harry Potter, the Fantastic Beast film will shoot there when it opens, uh, when, when it goes into production. So it's just super crowded. And now China wants to build their own production studio uh, and not only make their own movies but entice, you know, Hollywood films to shoot there as well. Uh, so I think this is all very interesting, that films are no longer really made in Hollywood. I mean, the business is still conducted there. But a side thing as well that I thought was interesting was it occurred to me, with so many films being shot in the UK, for instance, maybe that's why UK actors have such an edge in Hollywood. Because, you, of course, you'll pay to lodge and you know the, for the travel expenses for your big-name actors. Uh, but you're going to want actors who live nearby for the smaller supporting roles, because it's just not worth it for months to pay for that when they can just you know commute from London. So that, that's very interesting, and so that's giving uh, British actors an uh, you know, unfair or, I guess, competitive advantage uh, in, in terms of being in front of the camera. And if this is a go in China, perhaps more Asian actors who are local in China would also see a kind of benefit. So if you're an actor in China, you're an uh, aspiring actor, perhaps you might want to start working on your English and uh, being able to get rid of your accent, and maybe you too will be able to uh, star in a Hollywood film. So I just think that location actually is an interesting side effect. I mean, you see it happen in New York all the time. A lot of New York actors uh, get work, and you know, so HBO, for instance, Boardwalk Empire is shot uh, here in New York, so a lot of uh, local theater actors end up on the show because they're right here. So those are the three stories for the day. Uh, the, for the question, it's from Absolute Zero, actually, and I'm glad uh, that this was brought up. Said uh, in my for my Captain Phillips review, said how are the actors who portrayed the Somalian pirates? How is their story portrayed in the film? I, I didn't get the chance to touch on that in my review, but I'm, so as I said, that's why I'm glad it was brought up because I was really impressed that they used actual Somalis. Uh, who were living here in, uh, in the United States? They went. They, went uh, they sought out Somali communities to find, you know, people to realistically portray these characters, and it was very refreshing because, as I talked about uh, and got into a lot of arguments with people, I thought the casting Jake Gyllenhaal as the Prince of Persia was ridiculous. Instead of using, uh, you know, a, um, a Persian actor from that part of the world to portray the character, so I love it when Hollywood's realistic. I love it when they, you know go for that kind of level of realism and you know they go and find an unknown actor in all the cases these guys are not professional actors and had acted really only in small short films they made themselves uh, but they did an excellent job here and I thought they were very well portrayed and very fairly portrayed so kudos to Paul Greengrass for doing that and I think that he should you know that should be recognized all right so that's today's morning movie news thank you for tuning in I hope you'll let me know any questions you'd like to see answered tomorrow and any stories you want to see covered as well thanks for watching bye